This is a video about binary search. My name's Alan Doran. By the end of this video, not only will you know how to do a binary search, but you'll also understand what it's got to do with apples. Before you begin, it's important that you understand the concept of an algorithm and you know what the components of complex algorithms are. If you don't know the answer to these two questions, please go and watch the relevant video or look up answers to the questions in your favourite book. Suppose we've got a music library, like the one illustrated here, with a list of songs, and we want to choose a specific song to play. How do we get that song? Well, usually, of course, you just scroll through the list, and when you see the song that you want, you click on it, and maybe you'll then click the play button to select it for playing. Sometimes the screen looks more like this on your music player. For instance, a car stereo only shows a single line of text at a time, which might correspond to the name of one song. Now still, of course, you scroll through the list, and when you see the song that you want, you select it by clicking a button or pushing play or something similar, and that way you can play the song you're after, right? Now what you're doing in these circumstances is what's called a sequential search and we've got an algorithm for that written here for every song in the list if the song is the one that you want then you select it and play it so in the sequential search we move through one song at a time usually from the beginning of the list until we find the one we're looking for here we can see the songs laid out just as or represented as boxes with a character for the name of the song and supposing we're looking for a song called E that's the one we want to play and we've got a blue box here outside uh, which represents the song that's currently displayed on the screen of our car stereo whatever um, and it's also the one that's selected for playing at the moment now if we wanted to find E then we just have to scroll through this list one at a time, checking until we've found E. We're looking for the condition that says we've found the song we're searching for, and then we can push play and play it. Now, in this case, the list is ordered alphabetically. That doesn't need to be the case. Of course, we could have a list where the song names are all random or randomly um, sorted, in which case we still find, by searching linearly through the list, the song we're looking for E. I just noticed there are two songs, E, with the same name in this list. Now, maybe the second one is the one we want. It's by a different artist to the first song in the list called E. Okay, so there's a better way to do things than searching through every single thing in the list one at a time until we find what we're looking for. This is called binary search. To conduct a binary search, we assume that the list is in alphabetical order in this case, or at least it's in a sorted order. Now that doesn't mean that we need to have a song for every letter in the alphabet. Here's another list that's still in alphabetical sorted order, but we're missing a few letters. And we're still, let's say, looking for the song E, which now appears fourth in the list. How do we find it? Well, if we've got our screen that only shows a single song at a time, our view really looks something like this. We don't actually know what most of the songs are in the list. We only know the name of the current song. In this case, it's the first one in the list, A. Now the question is, is this the song we want? Well, it's not. We're looking for E, as it says in the bottom right-hand side of the slide. The question now we need to ask is, since we know this list is sorted in alphabetical order, is the song E going to appear after song A in the list? If it is, then of course we need to look somewhere to the right of the current location to find the song in the list. One thing we can do is jump straight to the last thing in the list and find out what's there. In this case, it's V, the song V. Is the song V the one we want? Well, no, it's not. But we can actually ask, is the song we're looking for before V alphabetically? And yes, we're looking for E, 
and so it's before V. So we know that the song, if it's going to be anywhere in the list, and this is a, a sorted list, an alphabetically sorted list, then the song E must appear somewhere in the list between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So we don't need to worry about searching anywhere else. Chances are we'll find it if it's in the list at all between A and V. Now what do we do? Well, we could start at A if we wanted to and search along the list sequentially like we did at the start of this video. But we're going to now conduct a binary search which is a little bit better than that. To do a binary search we break the list into two roughly equal halves. We pick something in the middle. For instance, you can see I've drawn a blue line over one of the middle squares. And this subdivides the list into a left half and a right half. But this middle spot is as good as any to see is there an E song in this list. So what we want to know is what's here. In this case, we find there's an H at this location in the list. Now, is H the song that we want? No, it's not. Unfortunately, we're looking for E. However, by subdividing the list, we know that all of the entries to the left, making up what's called the left list or the left sublist, must be alphabetically from A to H. And over on the right, we've also got a sublist that runs from H to V. So now, the question is, is the song we want before H or after H? Will it be in the left sublist if it's anywhere or in the right one? Now we're looking for the song E, so the only list we care about is the one going from A to H. We can throw out half of the list approximately because we know that the song E will not be there if it's in the list. Now we don't know where in the list E is likely to be but we'll choose the middle location, we'll do another binary subdivision of the list and we'll find out what's in this location. It turns out in this case there's a C in this location. Unfortunately that's not the song we want either. Just as before, by doing this binary subdivision, we've broken the list into two halves. We've got a left list from A to C and a right list from C to H. So now what we want to know is, is the song we're looking for, E, going to be in the left list or the right? And since we know it comes after C, E comes after C alphabetically, we can throw out the left sublist and just look at the right sublist. And we do a binary subdivision of this list, and we find out what's there, and at last we've found our song, song E. So that's a binary search. You've probably done this before if you've ever looked up a phone number in the yellow pages for a company by company name, or actually in the case of the yellow pages you can see illustrated here by subject. So if we're looking for a plumber, for instance, then unless we're using the index, we would actually pick up the book that runs from L to Z and halve our problem. We don't need to search through a massive book anymore. We know P comes after L, so we should look in the right-hand book. Now, we might open the right-hand book, or the L to Z book, if you like, um, somewhere in the middle, and we see does P come before or after the place we've currently opened the book. If it comes before it, then we search before the current page in the book. And we keep subdividing the halves of the book until we find plumbers. Here's the algorithm for a binary search. We've just called it binary search a list. In a nutshell, we examine the middle entry in the list. If the entry is the one we're looking for, it's the goal, then use it. We've finished the algorithm. If the goal is less than the middle entry that we've just discovered, then we need to search the left-hand side of the list because we know that the goal will appear to the left in a sorted list of the entry we've just examined. Otherwise, we search the right-hand side of the list. That's it. That's the whole algorithm for binary search. We can think of it or visualize binary search like this. Here's an ordered list. We choose the thing in the middle, and we want to know, is the thing we're looking for going to be on its left or on its right? If it's on its left, then we subdivide the left half of the list. And now we say, is the thing we're looking for 
to the left or the right of this new marker. If it's to the right, then we subdivide the section we just marked out between what was originally the middle of the list and the middle of the left half. We subdivide again if we think it's now found to the left. We subdivide again if we still think it's to the left. And we subdivide again until we actually find the entry. So you can see we're breaking up the half of the list into a half, a half, a half again until finally we find what we're looking for. So that's it for binary search. The binary search algorithm subdivides an ordered list into two halves and each time we do this we make sure to check the left hand sublist or the left half if the thing we're looking for is less than the middle entry we've just examined otherwise we're looking the right half of the list until we finally found what we're looking for. So what's this got to do with an apple? Well, next time you see a hole in the surface of an apple and you're wondering where the worm is, chop the apple in half. Now, is the worm in the left half or the right half you can enter, or you can ask yourself? If it looks to be in the left half, then you subdivide the left half again until you've got quarters and eights and so on until you've found the worm. Happy apple munching.